Oh my lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was really scary. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Patrick and this is the Mach-E Vlog. In this video, Liv and I are gonna go over a lot of the features of Blue Cruise 1.2 and various scenarios, and we're gonna cover that little scary moment that you just saw, so let's go. Okay, in this video, it's basically us just driving around for about a week using Blue Cruise 1.2 and other ADAS features that are in the Mach-E and just trying to put it through different scenarios, different situations, and highlight some of the features of Blue Cruise and specifically Blue Cruise 1.2. So that's what you're getting ready to get and we're gonna start right now. Well, we're back on the same route as we did previously <laughs> in our first, first drive. Yeah, and we're trying to find some rain, but we haven't found any rain yet. It's sprinkling. It's supposed to be some heavy rain, but it's also getting dark, which uh, we'll test it at night, but the video quality won't be as good at night. So I was hoping to find some rain during the day and then some rain at night. So let's uh, just sort of keep going and, and see how this is. One of the things that somebody asked for us to test was to sort of just tap the uh, turn indicator and then will it do the lane change without me leaving the blinker on? And the answer is yes. So I want to change lanes to the right. I'm just going to go up slightly. It says preparing lane change and it's moving us over to the right. And then the blinker goes off. So that's actually really slick. I'm glad somebody asked that. And uh, other people pointed out in the comments of our first video. If you haven't watched that, make sure you go back and watch it now. But let's go find some rain. Yeah. So now we're just coming out of a curve and there's a exit ramp here. No ping ponging. It didn't like make any deviation over to the, the right. Like it was trying to go in the exit ramp. Very smooth, still no ping ponging at all. And now we have an on ramp. So we'll see, cause that can also trick it out sometimes or at least with 1.0. And let's see how the markings are here fairly uh, clear because we had a different color pavement with the on-ramp and the the main road so that was fairly easy didn't feel any deviation whatsoever and actually you just answered a question so we uh we have this vehicle with blue cruise 1.2 for a week we released our first impression first drive of blue cruise 1.2 uh, this change. morning lane changing Nice. That felt smooth. Um, so we released our first video, the first impression this morning, and we have a ton of amazing comments from you guys and questions. Thank you. So we'd like to answer some of them and address them. And we're going to do that now. So you just answered one of them, which was, is there ping ponging? <laughs> Does it feel like there's any ping ponging anymore? Now, we have Blue Cruise 1.0 in our regular, our, our Mach-E, this one we have on loan. And it, I don't think it ping pongs as much as it used to. Uh, but I do think that there are certain times of the day, like going into the sun, that it can have trouble finding the lane a little bit. So we'll try to test this one in some bright sunny conditions and see if you know if that affects it. Man, we're just asking for all the weathers. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna keep going. I was gonna turn around here. We gotta go to dinner with family, but uh, I'm gonna keep going. We're gonna look for some rain. And so another question, which I think you just did was, does lane change assist initiate with a three blink tap on the turn signal? Yeah, that's what I was doing is like testing that out. Um, and again, so like here's a car. I asked for it to do a lane change. Here comes somebody that just changed lanes. So now it's slowed down a little bit because that car was in the way and got me over into the other lane and is accelerating. So it saw that other car changing from two lanes over into our lane and waited for it to get out of the way, slowed down for traffic in front. Like it handled it very, very well. I held my breath. <laughs> I held my breath for that. How did you not hold your breath? <laughs> well, I, you know, being the driver and being over here in control, I can feel like what it's doing. Um, okay, you can but, feel it. Yeah, and I, and I know I'm ready. And I could see in the mirror, like that car is coming. If it was gonna continue going, I would have stopped it. But. Uh, it, it made me nervous because I saw it 
like switching into this lane and hoped that the Maki saw it. It did. It waited. It slowed down because we were getting. And they were moving much faster than us. So. Yeah, and then also right now, hard to tell, but it's like the car has scooched over it because it can sense that there's a big truck, and it shows in the graphic here. And then once we get past the truck, it should move you back over a little bit. There you go. And the graphic moved back over as Hopefully well. Hopefully, hands not in front of it. <laughs> yeah, I will. We'll, <laughs> Hopefully, if not, I'll point like this from now on. But shout out to you guys in the comments. I think Sam was the first comment I saw that actually pointed that out. So in our previous video, we got a couple spots. Someone else pointed out a different spot. I think like three minutes and 30 seconds in and then 15 minutes in where you can see that happening. So thank you, you guys, for noticing that stuff and sharing it as well. So let's see what anyone else said. People want to know if it stays engaged on curves. Ooh, this is a good curve. This is a decent curve, uh, not slowing down there or anything. I like how the map rotates. <laughs> and this time we're using Apple Maps. And we decided to use the bright mode uh, light. Which do you guys like more, light or dark? I'm going to keep this going until we even out on the straight. And then we're getting ready to turn to the left see if it scooches over for this bus and it does yeah nice so it scooched over even though we were in the curve or thankfully you know like gave us some more room um but it didn't feel like it jerked over to the left and then as soon as we got around the bus it's now back in the middle of the lane and that looked curvy to me yeah you As know a human we're, we're gonna you know we're gonna do some uh more testing we got it for a few more days we'll try and hit uh, some curvy roads on like I-15 and see how that works. Yeah, this is definitely dictated by us having day jobs and then having a family birthday tonight. We just wanted to like hop out and basically the birthday is down the coast and we're at the top of the coast. So we're just going up and down. But we're definitely going to sleuth out some other areas. Oops. By the, the way, I looked at the, the screen too long and it uh, alerted me <laughs> to watch the road. But I was noticing for a while, I, Apple Maps didn't update, so it looked like the, the freeway just ended. I think there's a movie like that. By the way, there's a autos with trailers, 55 mile per hour sign. I have it set to adjust for speed limits, but the car was smart enough to ignore that one and yeah. continue at 65. So you can turn that setting on or off, whether or not you want it to uh, obey speed limit signs and it will obey the general ones, not like the, the specific ones for trucks or anything like that, or it's not supposed to. Uh, sometimes I have found that it will uh, catch some of those that say like 55 for trucks and it won't recognize that it, that's what it says and it will break and slow down to 55. So most of the time I have it turned off, uh, but like when I'm on road trips, I like to turn it back on so that I don't like go through an area and not realize that the speed limit has changed significantly and potentially get a ticket. So there's pros and cons to having that on or off. You can leave it up to you. You can also set Blue Cruise, like you, like I have it just set to the speed limit. Uh, you can set like a speed variance so that it, like if you want to do five miles per hour over the speed limit, it would do 70 right now and the 65. And then uh, if it dropped to 55, it would do 60. So it would, you can set it to like a plus five or a plus three um, totally up to you. Speed limits the speed limit, and our videos will will stick to the speed limit. And that one, uh, it said 55 again. And now we are definitely going that way a little bit. Yeah, I was noticing that. But it did not do a dramatic. Yeah, it definitely went toward the exit lane slightly there, and we're slowed to 60 because of the the traffic in front of us. Let's do a lane change. And I like that it even though there's a car next to us it's monitoring that it waits for the car to get out of the way and then it executes the lane change so i tried to turn on blue cruise here but we're in a construction zone it's raining the lines keep appearing and disappearing so i can tell that the lane keep system is functioning sometimes and not functioning it's let me know by like the gray lines just disappeared so that means it's not detecting the lines. Now it is. Uh, I can try to turn it off and then back on again. Now it's back 
trying to turn it on. And again, it's doing just the lane keep, but not uh, intelligent cruise control and definitely not Blue Cruise. We're on I-5 in Carlsbad, California. It's hard to tell at night, but this is a known construction zone. So that might be what's causing it not to activate. We're gonna go get on uh, California Route 78 and do some testing there in the rain. Okay, we're on California Route 78. I'm gonna to try to turn on Blue Cruise. It's a really rough road and it's raining. Ugh. So it's on intelligent cruise control, but not Blue Cruise. We'll see if Blue Cruise will actually activate. So it just basically wants my hands on the wheel uh, you can tell it's it's raining. It's not raining really hard. Uh, let's see here. And now Blue Cruise is on. This road, it like uh, goes in and out of the hands free versus hands on system, even in the best of conditions. So we're just going to drive a little bit of this stretch and see how it does. Uh, I'll do a lane change real quick and see how that works in the rain. Lane change, no issue. Blue Cruise back in this lane, and then uh, just so I'm not in the fast lane, let me move back over, do another lane change. And I'm just tapping on the turn signal. It goes on while I'm making a lane change, and then the turn signal turns off. We got a curve. This is one where it wants me to put my hands on. It's a visual warning, and then once, uh, if I don't pay attention to the visual warning, it will give an audible warning. And as soon as we straighten out again, it sort of will probably activate again. And there it goes. So now hands free. Again, it's not heavy rain, but we are getting a, a bit of splash back here and there. Uh, so decent performance here. Again, uh, this is California Route 78. Some of these curves, it turns off, uh, but turns off the hands-free portions even on uh, sunny days but here we come up to a curve i don't drive this route uh, hardly ever so I, i'm not familiar with it too much um, and especially not at night i don't think i've ever driven this at night so i got my hands ready to take over i'm watching the road uh windshield wipers are on auto as well uh, but overall uh this is a uh, definitely doing an okay job totally put my hands back on the steering wheel next time I'll it does that I'll just uh, let it go for a few seconds so you can hear that it does an audible alarm at some point uh, usually more I think it's about five seconds so we're going around this curve hopefully it'll start back again so with Blue Cruise 1.2, it does not seem to have expanded any of the blue zones, as Ford calls them, of where you can activate Blue Cruise. But all that means is, is that, you know, it's like a normal uh, hands-on system, which means you just got to touch it every few seconds. But uh, I think that's silly. I'd rather just rest my hand on the steering wheel and have it ready uh, rather than just keep touching like some people do. That's up to you. Uh, just be safe. So now Blue Cruise is back on. Let me do one more lane change. Preparing lane change. Moving us over. Here comes an exit lane. Let's see how it handles this. Completely smooth. No wobble. No bobbing. And then we're right next to that wall. It's not really moving us over because of that wall, but. I don't feel like I'm too far over to the right. I feel like I'm still dead centered in the lane. I, if I was manually driving, I would have probably moved over a little bit to the left though. So may want to ding it for that or not up to you. Handled that on ramp with no issues. So I think that's it for this, this amount of rain. We're going to turn around and head back down toward I-5 and see if we can catch some more rain before we have to head home. Okay, now we're on the other side of uh, the 78, heading back toward I-5. Uh, I thought it, the rain was picking up. Um, it is in spots, but 
this is what we get. Whatever we get is what we get. Um, Blue Cruise is back on, going through a slight curve. So far, no, no major issues that I see. Uh, everything is pretty clear. If we hit another section where Blue Cruise uh, wants me to put my hands on, I'll let it go to the audible warning first. Should we do another lane change? Why not? So I'm gonna tap the uh, blinker, move over to the right lane. We have uh, an on-ramp here, so this might be a little bit tricky for it. Keep hands on steering wheel. Oh, I went ahead and touched it. It's just out of habit. But it didn't bobble or anything on that, uh, with that on-ramp. It just wanted to be put my hands back on. Let me do a, another, see if it, oh yeah. I thought it was gonna do the lane change even though Blue Cruise wasn't on, mm -hmm. but it didn't. So I just forced it over on my own. And this is the section as we were uh, just filming coming the other direction where uh, it wanted me to have my hands on. I think it's because it's like a hill and a curve, um, which makes sense. Just want you to have your hands on the steering wheel ready to go in case something is going on. But it's still handling the steering. Uh, like I said, I could just tap it every few seconds, but uh, just resting my hand on there, I can feel the steering wheel doing its thing. And then as we come around this other curve, I think it'll Blue Cruise hands off will activate again. And then we'll be getting pretty close to I-5 and uh, construction zones where I don't want to have it on. <laughs> so here we go, Blue Cruise activated, hands off again. And the rain, it just, it, we're supposed to get like one to two inches of rain tonight, but we're trying to film and it's not really raining at all. Uh, we're getting splash back, but that's about it. Fairly good road conditions overall. So uh, if we, find any more rain, we'll start filming again, but I think that's it for our little nighttime rain test. Okay, I turned on Blue Cruise hands-on. It's not really called that. It's intelligent cruise control with lane centering. <clears throat> this is a two lane road, which I don't know why people would normally turn it on, but that car just pulled out in front of us. It slowed down for that, handled the curb, and I was hoping to see like how it handled curves at speed, like if it slowed us down, but this guy is going really slow. It's, I have it set to 48, speed limit is 50, and this guy's doing 29. So <laughs> we'll see, hopefully he speeds up a little bit. Road is really rough. Mm. And I might have to like stop and let this guy go because he's just going to ruin our test. If he's about to turn off. I will say it was comforting feeling it slow down for him because he pulled in front of us going slowly and continued to go slowly but that was uh it started slowing down quite far in advance yeah like, like it, it wasn't shocking oh. as, as soon as it saw him going into our lane it was applying the brakes and it wasn't abrupt it felt um fairly controlled it is funny because 50 does seem like a fast speed limit for this road it's bouncy it's bumpy and it's two lane there we go now he's yeah. speeding up some maybe he's carrying a precious cargo And it's speeding up and everything. And it gave me a prompt, keep my hands on the steering wheel, which it was, but very lightly. And here's a situation where I don't think Blue Cruise or Intelligent Cruise Control will do well. I can see that traffic slowing and we're coming around a corner and will it slow down gently? No, it actually did an okay job there. So, okay, I was wrong. I, there's sometimes when it's like coming around a corner and all of a sudden it sees traffic, it can be a little bit abrupt and breaking. It did cancel there, um, but it was continuing the curve that I was on and basically re-engaged. That was a wider intersection. Some of those it handles fine and others it'll, it'll cancel and turn control back over to me. It won't like all of a sudden just like let go of the steering wheel. It maintains what it was doing 
so it's not too abrupt. But uh, this is a non-mapped road, so we can't do hands-off blue cruise, but this is basically the intelligent cruise control. Um, the lane changes, somebody wanted me to test to see if lane changes work here. They do not. I just tapped the turn signal and it basically gave me steering control instead of trying to handle uh, the lane change. And with the lane changes on the freeway on Blue Cruise, I can see some arrows by the car. Uh, basically one pointing left, one pointing right, let me know that that's an option. Did not see that here. But in a lot of ways, this is doing everything that the hand free Blue Cruise is doing can't do lane changes and I gotta have my hands on it. So that's the big difference, but it's steering for me. It's not ping ponging like uh, it would with just a lane centering system. And now we're coming up to a red light. It won't stop for red lights, but it will slow for the car in front of me. And it's making me a little bit nervous. I would slow down a bit more than, or a bit quicker than this did but uh, it's not like I felt like I was gonna run into the back of them. I think I would have just braked a little bit more. And what's our following distance set to? Um, I have it on two. So you can set the following distance to one, two, three, or four. Uh, around here, I've been doing two a lot. I think it depends on the area and your use case. So uh, driver ground in San Diego, I find that if I don't keep it on one or two, people just keep cutting us off. But on our longer road trips, especially like out in the desert, I'll put it on like four because that just makes sure that it's just like really smooth. And um, if it does come up to traffic, it slows down a bit more gradual. I'm also in whisper mode. Uh, I believe it's more aggressive in the different modes. We're gonna try to test that out in another segment. But for now, I got it in whisper mode. I think it's more aggressive and uh, engaged and bridled. I press the X to resume. It's starting off really slowly. I'd like it to start off way faster than this. This feels uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. Come on. Oh my gosh. Come I'm on. I'm not even going to make the light. Come it's on. so uncomfortable. And then it canceled <laughs> in the intersection. Uh, come on. Uh, so we'll just test it out real quick. If I get another light, I'm going to put it in unbridled mode. Oh, yeah. And then see if it starts off faster at the next red light if we catch one. That was very far. That that was uncomfortably yeah. slow. Oh, we have to take this, so. <laughs> it's <Ooh>. for me. <laughs> Just tap to resume, so we're gonna do that. Let's, we'll get another one taking off, seeing how this feels. What happens if you tap to resume before they start moving? It won't, it won't move. Okay, but yeah. will it still resume? Like, what's the time? Oh, it, the there, there's like, like a few seconds where you, it'll give you like, and when it comes to a stop, actually a good point. If it comes to a stop and then say like five seconds later, you're ready to go again, it'll just auto resume. If you come to a stop like that and it's more than like five or 10 seconds, then it's, um, you actually have to tap the button to get it to resume. I think you can tap the accelerator. So we'll test that real quick on the way back as well. I'm gonna- There's quite a lot of traffic. I know, now we gotta go back through traffic to get back to mm -hmm. where I wanna report the next segment. So we're gonna go ahead and turn around here. Well, you guys wanted to see us take Blue Cruise into heavy traffic. So that's what we're doing. Thanks, we appreciate it. <laughs> we, LA traffic. Yeah, no we're less. actually in LA traffic. We actually have to go to an appointment. So this is a good little test. Um, not that I'm looking forward to traffic. I don't know if we're doing stop and go at any point, but it is definitely slow and go for a few miles. Uh, we've already been in it for a little bit. It slowed down pretty nice, uh, but it's, it's handling all of this. Uh, it's showing over here. I know it's hard to see on the GoPro. But the two arrows that indicate that they're uh, that it can do a lane change instead of being like solid little gray, uh, it, it, I'll call them greater than and less than signs because that's what they actually look like. Um, they're dashed greater than and less than signs, <laughs> which is basically telling me that I can't, I could, could try to initiate a lane change, but it would have to wait to do that. But um, 
yeah, this is this is so much fun <laughs> testing uh, the traffic portion. And uh, this is LA traffic. It's been handling other parts of LA traffic, people cutting us off, um, you know, because we're doing a little bit over the speed limit. They want to do a lot over the speed limit and they cut like right in front of us. The car doesn't like slam on the brakes because it sees a car there. It sort of figures out it's going in front of us, but fast enough that it um, just keeps, maintains the speed and lets them get out of our way. So it's been fairly smooth. And then now, you know, we are doing stop and go and it's handling it pretty well. One of the things that I was a little worried about was that, uh, and it says auto resume, and we're slowly picking back up. One of the things I was worried about was uh, how does it handle that like last three miles per hour down to zero? Does the brake feel like grabby or anything like that? But I think it feels very smooth. Like mm. when we're coming to a stop here. Extremely in fact, smooth. Yeah, there is like a little tiny, tiny like boop, but it's uh, like, I could have it, done any better. No, yeah, I was going to say, like, it's smoother than a human, actually. Uh, and I don't, I don't know. It. Oh, hoo, hoo, did you see that person stop? Yeah. Ooh, that was not smooth. You can't see it. Way but... smoother than a human. <laughs> <be> sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like, even one pedal was harsher than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sometimes one pedal, and, it, and it's gotten better, but... Initially with the Mach-E, like if you had one pedal, especially like an unbridled and let it take you all the way to the stop, that last like two or three miles per hour was always like, Ear. yeah, um, it's gotten better. So now it's just like, Ear. I know that's very subtle, but <laughs> I like it still said, oh, it said, yeah, it says auto resumed. Now I need now it. it says, so you always have to be visually engaged with the screen. It's not like you're on autopilot and not paying attention, but is this more pleasant going through this traffic like this is icky traffic yeah i mean it's you know before i i never thought i would really care to have blue cruise or any type of cruise control in this type of situation but it does make it a bit more pleasant um i'm, I'm not having to just grip the steering wheel for no reason it's you know doing that and then you know i know that it's watching the traffic in front of me uh, coming to a stop because I think that's always the scariest part about stop and go traffic even if you are the type that's paying attention and you're driving uh, sometimes you see somebody you know hit the brakes after you you know you've been doing stop and go and you speed up to 20 and then all of a sudden they stop again I, I always worry that I'm going to miss that you know mm -hmm. so I, I feel like this is helping a little bit that little ding was uh, saying we have a five minute delay for slower speeds, but we're still on the fastest route. And now, by the way, I think that you might like this even more if you were using two pedal, because you use yeah. one pedal, two pedal right now in traffic, you'd be, because I personally prefer two pedal. I'm not the hugest fan of one pedal. In fact, I just don't like it. I find it challenging because I have a disability and I have a drop foot. So, Two pedal in this kind of traffic is really annoying, right? Accelerate, brake, accelerate, brake, 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 you know, but instead you're just like pressing on the accelerator. So if you're using two pedal, Blue Cruise. Yeah, this is really nice. It just switched to hands on. Yeah. So I'll just put my hand on it. Um, but yeah, it, w when I had a gas car that was a stick shift, it was absolutely miserable to do this type of stop and go for long and we did every day and we did pretty much every day <laughs> back and forth to work i think this is going to be a lot longer than a five minute delay mm -hmm. so you guys it's your fault so you're sticking with us for the entire yeah ha, ha, ha. no just kidding <laughs> it's like make you watch paint dry um i think you guys are getting the idea like even that just scooched up just a little bit okay all right we can stop now um <laughs> uh, but I think you guys are getting a good idea. I'm not going to try to do a lane change because there's there's no need, but maybe I will in a second. And you're not engaged, can you? It's not doing the greater than, less than. Oh, yeah. No, it would just wait until there was a gap. Okay. But, like, I, I mean, you can't, really it, it really isn't any need to do a lane change when you're doing two miles an hour no. at most. <laughs> and there's a Bull TV next to us. It's actually cool getting a chance to look at the cars around us in this kind of traffic because there's lots of Teslas, there's a couple hybrids. Uh, the Bull TV Continue looks so cute. Miles on I, I tapped the wrong 
I want to see my So map. the moment that we started entering this traffic, we didn't engage with you guys straight away. We were checking out what the traffic was like. Tap to resume, just so people know. Tap to resume. Um, before we even entered the traffic, people started cutting us off. And um, it's like noticeably a more aggressive area. I think it handled it really nicely. And this was when we were moving at higher speeds, but it started to get a little more condensed. Like, I didn't feel like I felt scared watching the cars cut us off. It's just too close to get to someone when you're moving at high speeds at high speeds. But I thought it handled really well. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, well, we can try to capture some of that. I'm not going to promise that we'll have another segment. We can talk about it that maybe it will, but maybe we will. But we'll just have to wait and see. Um, it's hard to capture everything that Blue Cruise does. Oh boy, it's really like adjusting oh, this. Ar 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 this is a straight little thing. But uh, yeah, so I, I think that's it for our little test of stop and go. I can see it speeding up over there. Maybe we'll turn it off and then 10 minutes when we get over there, we can watch it speed up. Yeah, maybe we'll have some fun fun scenery um, and fun roads. I'm distracted by the eye pace. That was really pretty. Look at all these cars. But anyways, uh, we'll touch base soon. Okay, we are getting toward the end of the traffic. So let's see if we can capture how this handles everything speeding back up. It keeps, uh, it's mostly in uh, blue cruise, but every once in a while, like when we come to a stop, it's telling me to put my hand. Uh, I don't mind just resting my hand on the steering wheel a lot of times anyways. Um, but I know like if I needed to, I could, still lives coffee and take a drink um but if i'm not doing that i just rest my hand on it it says it's ending on the, the screen which i don't know if you guys can see that it doesn't look very endy to me although i see emergency vehicles oh my lord <laughs> <laughs> that was really scary yeah <laughs> <laughs> like we could see them coming over and i like i definitely moved my foot over the break and uh, basically if I didn't have the camera running, I would have probably have tapped the brake. For sure. <laughs> but I'm like, hey, this is the Ford loaner car they to test exactly. for this purpose. So it's supposed to handle that stuff. Um, it did, but, it did, it, it, it did. It, it, it did, did handle it. But uh, yeah, I I think nine, 99 times out of 100, I would probably just tap the brake. But we're, we're speeding back up. It's doing a good job of speeding back up. Uh, does it feel like all of a sudden it's going too quickly, getting back up to speed? It's, we're still being moderated by that car in front of us. It's still, I could tell like as they're speeding up, we're just matching that speed. But uh, yeah, that was a, <laughs> a, a great stop and go. That last one, like it, it was funny. It's like we've been, you know, people cutting us off at like 60 and 70 no I, problem, but that one I was like, oh my god. I was for sure like, oh, we're gonna ding him. Like, yeah. Um, and they handled it really well. I think the disconcerting part, well, one, it was very close, right? It's it's going inhumanly close, but we saw that car moving over before this did. Yeah, it's so you know, with most systems. It's literally just like watching what's going on in your lane. It can see, but it's sort of like it, it can't really interpret what's coming into your lane. And basically, once it got over like halfway into the lane, then it's like, oh, I need to I need to react to that. So that's something that you have to always look out for. And especially like another situation going high speed, whatever system you're in, you need to pay attention because these systems all have the trouble seeing like something that's like two feet into your lane. For example, a fire truck or police car or something like that that's just sort of like partially in your lane and you're doing like 70 miles an hour. They have trouble reacting to that until it's too late. Um, I, I'm not gonna test that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is actually investigating Tesla because they've had some issues with that. They may be investigating other instances where that's been a problem. But um, yeah, that's that's something that you need to be aware is that it, it can have trouble detecting stopped objects that are like one or two feet into your lane. Uh, so just be cautious. 
And there was that one incident, uh, a darker vehicle cut in front of us when we were going at higher speed. And I think we were recording, uh, but we could see that they were coming a full lane away, right? Because they cut across yeah. two lanes of traffic. The car couldn't see that. As humans, we're like, there's a dangerous person coming. Wee. And we scooted over for that truck again. Nice. And then, are we going to... Yeah, there we go. We adjusted back over. It feels very subtle when it's doing that. So you don't really. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, sometimes with Blue Cruise uh, 1.0, like if I turned it on and I was over to the left of the lane, it would go like, it like center me like very dramatically uh, for moving just like a foot or whatever. It felt dramatic. Yeah, certainly like uh, the slow stop in traffic is inhumanly smooth. And that little scooch is very smooth too. Like it's it's very much a, a well done thing, yeah. right? As opposed to anything sudden or jerky. So none of that ping pong, nothing jerky. And over, My heart is still racing from that moment. Yeah. Back there. And, and overall, I, I have to say, like I think, um, you know, we've said it several times. It's like I think Blue Cruise has improved over time with sort of like unannounced updates. Like it's you know it's just getting better over time with minor updates that they've released but haven't really said anything. Blue Cruise 1.2 is new features that they've actually have announced and I, I feel like it's just it's just getting smoother and smoother uh, all along. Okay, so now we're back to regular freeway driving. Let's uh, find another interesting thing to show you. Yeah. Another neat little feature of Blue Cruise that you won't really be able to see, but I, I'll tell you what I'm doing and why I think it's neat. Um, so right now it says speed, my speed is 65, speed limit 65, and I set uh, Blue Cruise to 65. But if I wanted to speed up for whatever reason, like I want to get up there and take that exit or whatever, I can actually just press the accelerator. It's still handling the steering. I'm still in hands-free mode. Uh, that's just telling me traffic. Uh, but the green little uh, speed that says, you know, we're set to 65 turns gray. That gives me an indication that I'm actually controlling the accelerator. So I can speed up to like, you know, 70 miles an hour or whatever. This is what I'm talking about. So now let me, I let off the accelerator. It's back to green. That means it's handling the speed and we're doing 65, speed limit 65. Oh, I wanna get up there a little bit. Let me hit the accelerator again. I'm speeding up. The little number that we're set to is at 65 and it's gray. And then I let back off and it's green. So long story short, what that means is, is like you can leave Blue Cruise or Intelligent Cruise Control engaged, accelerate faster than what it's set to without like disengaging the steering portion of those features and then just let off the accelerator and you'll resume your your set speed sort of i don't know if i explained it right but hopefully you got the point yeah it's super cool you're not stuck using whatever speed you're set to you can yeah. have some control if you want to speed up or catch up with someone or like if uh, you, let someone in if they're getting on the highway and you need to move up right? yeah like if yeah you, yeah, and that's actually where I've used it a few times is like when I've been in the the slow lane and somebody's coming on the freeway and I don't want to like get in their way, but if I tap the brakes, it disengages. So I'll just speed up a little bit with the accelerator, get out of their way, they can get in behind me, and then I let off the accelerator and then I'm back to my set speed. And it's that's especially like true like out on uh, I-15 between here and Vegas where you get those long stretches of of highway and you don't want to like just camp out in the, the fast lane. So anyways, I think it's a cool little feature and uh, hopefully you find that useful if you didn't know about it. Okay, let's hit the cruise control button. Of course, this isn't gonna be blue cruise, but we're gonna test on just two lane roads, setting it to the speed limit. I'm waiting till it's showing the circle that it's active. We have like a fairly decent corner or curve up here. I don't think it's gonna handle this. I think it's gonna cancel. Got my hand ready over here. Whoa, yeah, that was not good. Uh, I 
It didn't cancel, but I had to like take control because it was swerving way too much. It didn't cancel, but it should have. <laughs> it should have. Yeah. Yeah. Let me put my hand back on and just be ready. And this is hands on. This is hands on. Technically not Blue Cruise, uh, but it's their intelligent cruise control with lane centering. I have predictive speed. Oh, maybe I don't. Let me, I'll let you find that. Uh, nice driver's shot. assistance. Make sure predictive speed is on. Speed limit assist. No. Uh, Not that one. It's under cruise control. Ah. Predictive speed assist was off. Okay. Yeah, I turned that off yesterday when we were filming the LA uh, drive because it kept seeing like a 55 mile per hour sign somewhere. Um, and it then, was like for trucks. It was a, a yeah. Yeah. It just sped me up. The speed limit just increased to 55. I'm going to put it back down because I have it going five over. It says 55 radar enforced. So on that corner where it was a little crazy, um, it didn't slow down for that corner. No. There's no signage to say to slow down. But I, I'm going to watch here and see if it's doing anything like on some of these curves coming up and see what it's doing. Like if it slows down for any of these, uh, which, you know, these aren't too sharp right now, but let's see, you know, just sort of keep an eye on it. They're also... Yeah, it slowed down and it shows like a little green arrow that I'm going to have you get on one of these. Yeah. So it slowed down to 48, even though I have it set to 55. And then here's another one. It's speeding back up. Oh. And it touched the line there. Oh, and it shows if you could see the Now it says there's the a curve. Car. And it's slowing down for this as well. Not canceling. And then here's a sharp one. It says 30 miles an hour. And it's slowing down. Let's see what it's going to slow down to. We're doing 40, 39, 38. It canceled, which uh, luckily my hand was there. I was mm -hmm. ready to take control. And I would probably be going faster than this, but I'm not going to. The guy behind me is just going to be a little annoyed. Speeding back up. It's trying to get back up to 55, uh, but I'm still steering. It's speeding up. Yeah, it's speeding up. I All haven't right. touched the brakes. Goodness. I'm still steering though. Uh, there's the arrow again saying it's gonna slow down even though I'm steering. Now it's back on. It's gonna try to speed up to 55. Jeez. And there's a corner coming up very shortly. A little bit of a corner, uh, but it's taking it at 55. That's not that bad. No, that was fine. Now this next one, let's see what it's going to do. I think it's going to do it at 55, <laughs> which is what I would probably do on this one. Yes. Um, but this comes back to, I'm not sure I would turn on cruise slowing control. Down. Yep. There's the arrow again, slowing down a bit to 50, 49. And then it's actually accelerating coming out of the corner. <laughs> It's pretty interesting. I like that it's slowing down before it hits the corner or and the curve it shows you. and it shows me so I can see that that's what it's doing. This one is pretty curvy coming up there. It just tapped the brakes, slowing down 51, 50. It kind of, it's disconcerting because it feels like you when you're driving spiritedly. Yeah. Um, like AKA, pushing it to the very brink of where you start braking and accelerating as soon as you can kind of thing? Well, it's tentative. I don't think it's being aggressive. It's being tentative. So it's sort of like, oh, there's, it, it, it'll tap the brakes a little bit. So it's not super smooth when it decides that it needs to slow down for a curve. And it feels like it's adjusting, like going, oh, I need to slow down. Oh, maybe not that much. So it feels like it's hesitating. Yeah. It's surprising to me that the person behind us is pushing um, on well, some of those corners. Yeah, I, I think I would have been going slightly faster than that. But the fact that it's handling it is pretty neat. 
uh, again, I, I don't know why I would ever turn on a cruise control on a road like this, but we're going to continue to test it out. And it slowed down that corner. It slowed down Thank and then goodness. canceled. And now it's slowing down some more. This is very curvy. I'm steering though. Good. <laughs> um, and I can see that the, the bubble is gone. It's was detecting the lines, but now it's not. Now it is. It's going back and forth. Um, let's see if it re-engages before this corner. It's already slowing down for it though, which is good. Mm -hmm. How does it know if it's not pre-mapped? It's not pre-mapped. This is all using the cameras and the radar. And, and it touched the a line red, there. The red line to indicate yeah. a touch line, but it did that. And I might turn it off. Well, let's see what it, oh, no. I'm steering, I uh -huh. forgot. <laughs> So I, I, I think this is hit or miss. Like I really like that it's slowing down and this is, I wouldn't say an extremely curvy road, but it is interesting. Like, and we don't know this road. This is the first time I've ever been on it. But there are a lot of roads like this. Wow, look at all the here. steel plates on that side. Oof, yeah. I'm glad we're not driving there. I know, I guess I have to come back. There are a lot of roads like this out here. And I think the big thing is, is that it's not crazy curvy, though it's only curvy, but we're very close to the other cars, the cars that are going in the opposite direction. You don't have a lot of room to move if you uh, move against the line, like it's indicated, it's done a couple times. Yeah. That's quite dangerous. And there it was like speed up, slow down a little bit, like it was adjusting, trying to figure out how fast to go into that curve. I really do like that it's showing like the arrow, like there's a right curve coming up, so oh, yeah. slowing down. And it's quite far in advance, really. Yeah. And it's a little bit reassuring. I almost wish it would do like that when it sees traffic ahead. Because there's sometimes yeah. where I'm like, I see traffic coming or slowing down, but I want it to tell me like, hey, I'm getting ready to break versus like, are you really going to break or not? <laughs> yeah. And just before that curve, there was a sign that said, take the corner at 40. I thought it might slow down, um, but it did Driving range low. Yeah. We're, we're trying to get down low so that we can do a charging test with this as well. So. Keep an eye out um, for that. And then this one is slow down to 40, but now we're coming up on traffic. So it's going to start slowing down to, to match what the traffic is doing as well. Um, but it's still showing me it's slowing because of the little curve with the little arrow. But I, I think that's a good demo for this segment. I think that's the end of our Blue Cruise 1.2 deep dive. So it's been a lot of fun having this. We didn't even capture everything that I wanted to capture on camera. There's a couple of things that I wanted to share with you just talking about it that we didn't capture on camera. One is on roads like this, where sometimes it switches into hands-on mode. Um, somebody asked like, can you do hands-on, have hands-on mode and do lane changes? Answer is yes and no. Like roads like this where requires me to put my hands on if I do the blinker then it will do the automated or the assisted lane change but on roads that have like stoplights and stuff where you can turn on um, intelligent cruise control that's hands-on if I tr try to do the lane change there it won't do it and the little greater than and less than looking arrows are actually dashed showing me that it's not actually available there but on something like this it would be available the other thing that I thought was really neat was I was going straight like this and wanted to do a lane change into the right lane because I had an exit coming up. And of course, the oh, it just canceled on me completely. Resume control. Um, and then now it's back on. But it, there was a car going like maybe 60, I was doing 70 and I wanted to do a lane change and get in behind them. And I initiated the lane change and the car, before it even started moving over into the other lane, started slowing down to match the pace that they were doing so that you could, you could tell that it was aware of what was going on in the other lane, which matches like the same thing. When I turned the blinker on, it's, it was monitoring what was happening in the lane behind me to make sure like there wasn't a car coming up really fast. So two additional little uh, things that I wanted to mention that I think uh, are you know contributing factors to the overall package of Blue Cruise and Intelligent Cruise Control. Speaking of which, let's do a lane change here. 
um, and it's already starting to speed up, thankfully. Uh, but overall, like I think Blue Cruise is great. Intelligent Cruise Control is great. Uh, the additional features have made it even better. It's getting smoother and better. I'm finding that I'm using it more and more. And even during this week, I found that I was using it more often. Of course, obviously we were trying to test it out as much as possible, but I was finding that it's actually pretty darn useful in a lot of situations. Love using it during stop and go traffic, even though that can make you a bit nervous when it's coming to a stop in front of you and you're letting the car decide when it's going to come to a stop. But overall, really happy with it. If you guys have any additional questions, please drop them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. We won't have Blue Cruise 1.2 uh, on our car uh, until it rolls out and we're hearing it could be summer, late summer, early fall, who knows, but uh, we'll try to get the, the answers for you. We're gonna try to interview somebody from the Blue Cruise team. I'm not sure if we can get approval to do that or set that up, but if you have questions for them, uh, let us know. And if you have experience with other systems, like drop comments and just you know let us know all the the pros and cons of different systems and which ones you like. We've tried multiples. We've tried autopilot, super cruise, uh, whatever the one from Audi and uh, Rivian is called. And I really do like Blue Cruise as one of the top ones in certain situations. Autopilot is good if you actually want to do like two lane roads, but I don't ever want to. But anyways, uh, I'm rambling on. Thanks again. Thanks to our patrons for helping make videos like this possible. And as Liv would say, she's filming. What do you? What would you, you say? You have to say it. Oh no! Uh, no matter what no. you. No. No. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah, wait. Okay. Wait. Firstly, I do have to throw in. Uh, we do have approval to talk to an engineer about Blue Cruise. We do. So give us your questions, give us your critiques, give us your concerns, whatever, because we will bring that to them and ask them everything. And yeah, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I can't wait. Thank you so much for joining us for this video where we went in depth into Blue Cruise 1.2. Can't wait to get it. I'm not anticipating good things. Maybe next year. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to assume next year because then I won't be disappointed. Right. Sure. Yeah, sure. So anyways, just remember that whatever you drive, whether it has Blue Cruise or no Blue Cruise or uh, not a steering wheel because it's a pony, enjoy the ride. Bye. Bye. <laughs>